amazing! It's no wonder that Jackie K. Cooper asked me to review this. Look out, cause here I cut on. And I'm marching on to the beat I draw. Actually, I should probably check to see what other critics had to say about it, because as we know, <laughs> critics are always right. Let's see here. It's just a movie where nothing happens and no one really learns anything and there are no characters. This movie is so dumb. What's happening? What's going on? It, it, it like blew our low expectations out of the water. So we thought you go this low and let really bothered me on a number of levels. The movie lacks any real sort of dramatic focus. This movie sucks. This movie sucks. I hated this movie. I had to stop watching. I mean, I love Nostalgia Critic as much as the next person, but... I was in there for days. Da na 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 Da na na Da na na Da na 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 Da na na Bow. The Greatest Showman. I wish I had a top hat or like, you know, a thing to... Oh, here's one. There you go. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so The Greatest Showman is written by Jenny Bix and Bill Condon. I could say it with enthusiasm instead of like an awkward little mouse looking into a camera for the first time. Bill Condon. Bill Condon. And it's directed by Michael Gracie. This is his directorial debut. It's impressive. I have things to say. It stars Hugh Jackman, Zac Efron, Michelle Williams, Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya, Kayla Settle, and Sam Humphrey. And many others that are totally worth noting. But, you know, go to IMDb. It's just... <laughs> Uh, this is a good movie. And yes, this is one of Jackie K. Cooper's absolute favorite movies. We took a look at what he hated with Hardcore Henry, and now we're looking at what he loved with The Greatest Showman. Don't forget to go check out his channel, subscribe, like his videos, do what you gotta do. Support the guy. And hello everyone, welcome to what is possibly the only positive review of this movie on YouTube. Hey, whoo, am I fired up. Every time I think about this movie, I just... I can't take it anymore. Why does this movie get so much hate from critics? Well, before I get all subjective, I guess the most common reason is it's based on a true story. So this is a big problem, apparently. This is, in fact, a much bigger problem than critics even know. Little do we know that so many historical films that have taken huge cinematic liberties and that are loved by both audiences and critics have been awful this entire time just because they're not entirely accurate. Movies such as The Imitation Game, Lawrence of Arabia, Spartacus, Catch Me If You Can, A Beautiful Mind, American Sniper, The Pianist, 300, The King's Speech, Ray, Seabiscuit, Hidden Figures, Lincoln, Schindler's List, 12 Years a Slave, Walk the Line, United 93, Braveheart, The Patriot, Argo, Juno, Passion of the Christ, Apocalypto, Ali, Valkyrie, Kingdom of Heaven. Do you get the point? Oh, and also Game of Thrones. Uh, up until the last three episodes. All oh, terrible, terrible movies. But don't worry, it gets better. You'll also hear things like P.T. Barnum was a terrible person. And that Walt Disney was a saint. And Steve Jobs was a philanthropist. And Chris Columbus was a cartographical genius. Or that Ernest Hemingway was a freaking teddy bear. Oh, it gets better. Did you know? Did you freaking know? Heck, did the critics even freaking Google if P.T. Barnum was a terrible person? On that note, did you freaking know that P.T. Barnum actually might have been a decent human being? Weird. Yeah, sure, there was negligence. Humans were humans. Mistakes were made in an oftentimes negligent and savage time period. But critics, let me tell you something. If P.T. Barnum is to be condemned while Aristotle, Ben Franklin, and Winston Churchill get a pass... You're insane. <laughs> sure, if you look explicitly at any given historical figure's past in a modern context, it's going to be distasteful at best. But if we look at it from a historical context, then suddenly we realize that people in the 1800s can't be held to a standard that didn't exist. If we could just understand what we knew then as a means of determining the genuinity of any given person, then we can conclude that the same man who loved his animals but 
didn't know how to take care of them. The same man who, like everyone else in that time period, had little regard for human equality, also was a prominent prohibition supporter, a loving husband, an anti-slave supporter, in the 1800s for Pete's sake. It's also worth noting that many of the bad claims about P.T. Barnum were written as having happened earlier in his life, meaning he saw that there were rectifications needed and he made good on his promise to fix them, which is more than I can say for some other historical figures. The point is, people, don't listen to people. Form your own opinions based on actual invested research. Now, I'm not here to tell you whether to see a movie or not. I'm here to give you an educated opinion in the hopes that you will form your own. <sighs> All right. That being said, let's now review one of the greatest movies of all time. Characters. I seem to remember some critics saying that not enough time was dedicated to the characters in this movie. Which characters are you referring to? These characters or these characters? Because somehow I'm absolutely in love with all of them. If I can distinctly tell you each character's persona and dilemma, then you at least have competently written characters. P.T. Barnum is a poor dreamer that is persistently determined to prove to his wife's rich family that he can provide for her. Boom. Little dude wants to feel as big as everyone else around him. Boom. Woman wants more self-esteem. Boom. A minority who wants to be treated equally regardless of skin color. Boom. An entrepreneur that actually cares about people. Boom. If you thought these weren't at least well-distinguished characters, then go join the freaking circus. There's a lot to be said about P.T. Barnum both in history and in this movie. Whether you believe that he purposefully or accidentally brought acceptance to people with deformities and disabilities, you can't deny that the real antagonists of this movie are the people that you least suspect. The ones who put a roof over their head and provided jobs for them. And who also locked them into seclusion and hid them for fear of personal criticism. Douches. Regardless of what other critics say, these characters were competently written with a purpose in mind that can be summed up into one word. Acceptance. Heck, even Mr. Bennett the critic in the movie saw these characters, or performers, both the way viewers see them and critics. I obviously side with the viewers. I never liked your show, but I always thought the people did. What a genius slap in the face that this movie was able to address its Rotten Tomato score in pre-production. Acting. You know, I actually wasn't going to say anything about the acting, but I'll just get this out of the way. From Now On is my favorite song in the movie. I even watched the rehearsals in the behind the scenes, and I can tell you, if there's one sure way to greatly increase your chances of making a spectacular film, give your actors and your crew something that they can passionately fight for. It was obvious by watching the behind the scenes that the actors and the crew truly believed in what they were doing. If you believe in what you are doing, having a passionate love for the idea that your film is trying to communicate, then you're most likely going to get a great film. It's incredibly difficult to screw up when you have so many people on a project who are invested. Take The Lord of the Rings, for instance. Three films shot back to back, each being about the length of two films each, so really it's a, it was six. It was risky, demanding, and it caused much speculation among audiences, but Peter Jackson got the right people. People who cared about what they were working toward, and thus, we have these. The Greatest Showman did the exact same thing. It had the love, the heart, and the passion behind the scenes that shined off of the silver screen through the acting. Enough said. Dialogue. 90% of this movie is the songs, so yeah, the songs are amazing. This is the first straight-to-film musical that I... I think I loved every single number, for the most part. It's like the Lion King of musical films. Assuming you're like me and you believe that the Lion King is the only Disney movie out there where every song in it is the best song ever. <laughs> There's just so much to gloat about in this film. To think that this is original content, original songs, and an otherwise overly saturated cesspool of remakes and book to film redundancy. Well, thanks, Greatest Showman. Story. And this is another one that the critics claimed was... The glaring yeah. weak part of yeah. this movie. I mean, that story is just, it is so surface level and any kind of conflict that is introduced in that story doesn't really mean all that much. Now granted, these comments came from Collider, who gave one of the more upstanding reviews for the movie. So, thank you. 
for that. Nonetheless, did we watch the same movie? I mean, I'm not here to proclaim that the storytelling in the film is perfect, but when you've got such great characters whose subplots have one goal in mind, where did The Greatest Showman go wrong? Each character in this movie is seeking acceptance. That's the story of The Greatest Showman. It is the story of acceptance. P.T. Barnum seeks his in-laws acceptance. The performers are seeking public acceptance. P.T.'s family wants him to accept them as enough if his hokey ideas don't work out. I think that's what makes a story, right? If it has a focus and all of the characters' motives are in line with that focus, then you can't go wrong. So, uh, well freaking done. Predictability. Yeah, there's no twists here. I mean, the movie's pretty straightforward. Not a bad thing at all, as I will always admire a cliche story that had me. No faults here. Morale. Well, goodness. That's it. it it's goodness. The moral is goodness. Now, this is a sensitive topic when it comes to The Greatest Showman, because P.T. Barnum and the public eye, <laughs> Well, it's not good. I'm not discounting mistakes. We all need to be held accountable for them, big or small. It's just that The Greatest Showman essentially did what Saving Mr. Banks did, where it took a distinct virtue and then it used the source material to craft something constructive and uplifting. It's important to know the difference between a movie like The Greatest Showman and, say, Dunkirk. Both are fantastic films, but they're just different. Dunkirk falls into that category of historical fiction because it is about the events that happened at Dunkirk and how they played out. It's competent in that it's simply there to tell us the story of what happened at Dunkirk. The Greatest Showman is, however, not simply here to tell us the story of P.T. Barnum or, or even how the circus was started. It's a story about acceptance. The creators even said that was the whole point. Everything from the music to the writing, it's all modernized to symbolize how progressive the idea behind the circus was at the time. How, you say? Well, let's start by looking at what the circus represents. Looking past the clowns, the man on the trapeze, the animals, and the magic tricks, the idea was to showcase intrigue. But Movie Slayer, what about the animals that didn't want to be there and that were probably mistreated? What about all the people who were deformed and exploited for how different they were? Well, you're right. But for the sake of objectivity, let's look at it from a different angle. As we discussed earlier, the real antagonists in the movie are those who not only ignored the different, but went to every possible attempt to hide them in order to avoid embarrassment and judgment. Then, someone comes along and sees them. Yeah, they mostly saw dollar signs, but they saw them and brought them out into the open. And yes, of course, there was a level of exploitation, but he didn't force them to come out. He encouraged them and they chose to follow. He only ever hid them when there was imminent violent persecution. Whatever the reasons may have been, the intrigue of the circus is what sparked progressive movements to give more rights, respect, and humanity to these individuals. I worked directly with special needs for three years, and I do still to this day. And so I was able to see even more how far we've come as a result of the awareness that P.T. Barnum brought, whether it was deliberate or accidental. Either way, it was a good thing that it happened. And the animals? Well, from what I've read, P.T. Barnum developed an endearing love for his animals, even making sure that he visited them, named them, and gave them the best possible living situation while knowing nothing about how to take care of animals. Zoos had the exact same problem. Everyone sucked at taking care of animals back then. I'm not excusing any of the mistakes of humankind. I'm just saying, chalk this one up to ignorance and hate dogfighting instead. So yeah, critics didn't like this movie. Why? I don't freaking know. In the end, many other movies did exactly what The Greatest Showman did and critics never batted an eye. The characters in this movie are whimsical, endearing, and easy to get behind. The acting and the dialogue on both a banter and musical level are spectacular, and the story and morale have both a clear and important message. And perhaps the final and most important thing to mention is that the album for this movie broke so many musical milestones. 
even beating out the Beatles and Adele. It's considered to be the greatest musical accomplishment in the past 50 years. That's not to mention the choreography in the movie, which is absolutely mind-boggling, especially considering that this is a directorial debut. I guess perhaps the best way to describe this movie is right in The Greatest Showman. They predicted exactly how I would describe it. Putting folks of all kinds on stage with you, all colors, shapes, sizes, presenting them as equals. Or another critic might have even called it a celebration of humanity. I see no fault with this one. It is, in fact, one of my all-time favorite movies. No shame. I'm putting it at number eight. So there you go. It's in the open. The Greatest Showman review has been done by the movie Slayer. It is, as a lot of you guys have been calling it, been slain. But has it? Just not by me, technically, by other critics. I'm here to pick up the pieces and put it back together with an axe. And tell me guys what you thought of The Greatest Showman. Oh, bad or good? I don't care. You know, I can still understand opinions where they say that it's bad, except I kind of can't. It's tough, but I, I can do it, all right? I can handle it. Guys, I appreciate you sticking with me and watching my videos and subscribing, liking my videos. That's another thing. I guess apparently liking videos is, is, is important. <laughs> so please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed to it because you're, um, you're missing things. <laughs> thank you if you do. Thank you for just watching. I don't care. I'm just glad you're here. Thank you for being uh, here. Now I must proceed to pick up my axe and swing it toward the camera. Just duck.